My name is Navasha and I'm the Compliance Lead for Cloud Essentials. Professionally, I'm an internationally certified compliance practitioner, as well as a designated compliance practitioner uh, via Compliance Institute in Southern Africa. Uh, I have experience working in knowledge management, legal advisory, as well as compliance uh, within the financial services sector. And however, my passion, I would say, lies uh, in being able to help organizations translate their legal and regulatory requirements into tangible people, process and technological controls. So it's my pleasure to be your host today, um, as well as to welcome my fellow experts who are joining me to talk to you today. I'm joined by Melindy Dean, who is a compliance specialist at Cloud Essentials. Over to you, Melindy. Good day, everyone. As Navasha mentioned, I'm Melindy Dean. I'm a compliance specialist at Cloud Essentials. I'm also an admitted solicitor of the Supreme Courts of New South Wales, Australia, and I'm a certified information privacy professional for Europe. Thanks, Melindy. And joining me as well is Johan, our technical lead. Good afternoon. I'm Johan van Skalpak. I'm a Microsoft security and compliance technical specialist with over 10 years of experience deploying various Microsoft technology and also managing content and migrating content from various legacy platforms to Microsoft 365 and Azure. Thank you very much. Thanks, Johan. Thank you. So please feel free to connect with us after the session. Sally will put uh, links to our LinkedIn profiles on the chat. We're, we're going to work through uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. So we're going to work through some of the presentation content. Uh, however, we will be as active as we can in the chat. So please feel free to type any questions in there uh, and we'll answer either on the fly or um, we'll, short, we'll be sure to make time at the end of the, the session as well for, for some Q&A. Uh, we will be, uh, during the course of the web webinar, we'll be launching a poll via Slido just to capture some of your feedback uh, and get some interaction going. So please be on the lookout for that. So keep your phones ready. Um, just to bring it back a little bit. So the aim of our session today um, is to bring you or is to advise you on the benefits of uh, insider risk management, but with the added bonus of bringing in our experience as Cloud Essentials, uh, as a technological partner, um, our experience in really managing the deployment of insider risk management with an organization. So over the next few slides, we, we will be unpacking um, the power of Microsoft's new uh, adaptive protection, but also what does insider risk mean um, and how does it help manage insider uh, uh, or manage risky behavior proactively rather. We'll also be giving you some tips on how to get uh, some balance between productivity and security using Microsoft Insider Risk Management, as well as guidelines for dealing with user privacy concerns, as well as uh, employee engagements. Um, and last but not least, um, some tips on policy and decision making, as well as what you'd need to have in place before deploying or when you're considering deploying, deploying insider risk management. So our session today uh, has been awarded with two CPE credits, which I found out means continuing uh, privacy education credits uh, from the International Association of Privacy Professionals. So we will share the approval we, uh, we obtained from the IAPP post session to all attendees. Just to give you a bit of background on our organization, Cloud Essentials is a long-standing Microsoft partner around the area of content management with a big focus as evidenced by the two compliance specialists on the call uh, on data compliance and governance. We are 100% Microsoft centric and we're highly regarded for being a niche specialist in the space. So we really try to help clients in three ways, depending on their needs. Uh, the well, firstly, creating conditions within Microsoft 365 for reduced risk through the deployment of Microsoft compliance and governance controls. Migrating content into Microsoft 365, this is typically unstructured data, uh, as well as managing growth or high volumes of content. Um, and lastly, solutions to ultimately open up and unlock uh, the value in your content by using things like AI. Um, so all this accumulated data can be surfaced as knowledge and used in your business. 
we typically work with clients in highly regulate, uh, regulated industries to help them deploy Microsoft Purview, which we're going to be talking about a little bit more uh, later on. And through this experience, we have seen the valuable ins uh, insights that programs or, or, or solutions like Insider Risk can provide an organization on their Purview journey. So as promised, I'm going to unpack um, a little bit more information on Insider Risk as we proceed. Um, on. As we know, uh, whether you're a data, a data governance professional, whether you're an IT professional, inside or, or data security incidents can happen um, anytime, anywhere. So with more than 300 million people now working remotely all over the world and collaborating across multiple environments and devices. Uh, data security incidents can literally happen now anytime, anywhere. Uh, and just to take it back, an insider risk can be described as a risk that exists due to the actions of an employee within an organization. So there are primary, there are three primary scenarios for data security incidents um, in this in this case. So firstly, if your organization doesn't have visibility into its data, um, then the data is at risk of misuse, either by exfiltration or exposure. Secondly, if a user has malicious intent and is trying to exfiltrate the data. And thirdly, if a user inadvertently uh, takes a sensitive document and makes it visible. So negligence. To bring this to life, uh, we found it's it's really effective to to use a typical real world. Uh, well, when we say real world, it's a highly dramatized real world story, purely fix, uh, fictitious. So, in this scenario, um, Dr. David Doom is the head of a research and development department in a large in a large company. He has been instrumental in developing. Um, high value uh, technology and other solutions for his organization. However, he has recently uh, employed some questionable work methods and that has led to some disciplinary proceedings being implemented uh, by the company, which has left him feeling disgruntled as he has obviously contributed and spent a large chunk of his working career at this company and he feels he's made them quite a bit of money uh, and he's entitled to this even though though uh, it is the company's uh, IP or intellectual property rather. So he then decides to resign, but before resigning, he starts collecting proprietary information owned by his company and downloading it to a USB. He then hands in his uh, official resignation at the company, and during his resignation period, he continues to exfiltrate um, this proprietary information by uploading them to his personal his personal accounts. So he he's obviously very senior and very intelligent, uh, and he he his next step is to delete any files he he might have moved. So deleting them on SharePoint and other recycle bins. And before you know it, he was successful in exfiltrating several documents before his final exit. So because he's vindictive, as we said, uh, and he is. He, he is aware of his rights to have his personal information removed uh, and returned to him. He's also aware because of his senior role within the organization, what, uh, what the organization may or may not have from a data security perspective. So he submits a data secure, um, um, a data subject access request rather to help him cover his tracks and find out what the company may or may not know uh, and then also request for his information to be deleted. So how this was possible, so if we if we unpack this, this scenario a little bit, uh, how he was able to exfiltrate um, a lot of this information is due to the fact that yes, he had a privileged uh, position within the company, so he had greater greater access rights uh, and the company then didn't have visibility into sensitive data. So if they haven't discovered and and um, catalog their data appropriately, they would not know um, what data exactly was being exfiltrated. 
Secondly, DRP or data loss prevention uh, didn't flag the repeated offender. So it didn't flag the fact that he was doing this on an ongoing basis. And lastly, even though there was this access control implemented, given his senior role within the organization, he was able to abuse this collaboration or, or this access pr uh, privilege rather. So with this very scary story, uh, in mind, I think it's it's important to understand um, what could have been or, or, or what we can learn from from the scenario rather. So DLP policies in itself. So just to unpack a DLP solution is a security solution that identifies and helps prevent unsafe or inappropriate sharing transfer or use of sensitive data. So it, it can help an organization to monitor and protect sensitive information um, on premise systems, cloud based uh, locations, and endpoint devices. However, it alone or implementing this alone cannot prevent in um, intentional actors from exfiltrating information, as organizations cannot block all channels uh, in a way that uh, would not hinder productivity and collaboration. As we said, he has uh, abused his collaboration, right? Further, DLP solutions have their limitations. For instance, they cannot detect sensitive data unless a user attempts to interact or share that data. And while DLP solutions might detect activities involving sensitive data, they typically flag each activity individually rather than providing an aggregated view of a user's overall activity. Uh, as a result, they, may, they might not identify repeated offender scenarios like we've just described. Uh, static DLP policies are also ineffective or also effective or ineffective on individual uh, channels and are not adaptive to evolving risks. Uh, so implementing such policies often requires a trade-off between productivity and security. Uh, and security is often compromised, uh, leading to potential data security incidents where sensitive data is uh, easily exposed and companies become vulnerable. So it proves that while traditional uh, that traditional data security uh, solutions are not enough um, in isolation to secure a company's most valuable data, uh, data and companies should combine their their current practices with solutions like Insider Risk to help detect um, this type of hidden risks to better protect their crown jewels. So with that being said, uh, we would like to hear from you and understand how your organization currently manages insider risks. So please get your phones out and um, and Sally's also dropping it in the chat. Join us at slido.com uh, and provide us with your feedback. You will see we've listed a number of options on there uh, as to how you might be or may or may not be managing your your risk right now. Just waiting for results to start coming in and then I'm going to share it. So just some results starting to come in. We have something in place, but it's very reactive. 22% uh, on we have Microsoft Insider Risk Management. Interesting. We have nothing in place. Sure, I'm sure. Um, okay, wow, that number seems to be going up. Thank you for sharing. We're gonna we will keep an eye on this poll and 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 update you all with the results as we go along. Thank you for for your participation. Right, the 
definitely a governance person, just uh, trying to work through the, the technology a little bit more seamlessly. I apologize. So as we've as we've seen from the results, um, I'm sure uh, there is this this concern for those organizations that are either not managing it, uh, managing the insider risk uh, at all, or they're doing so perhaps without the assistance of technology, just implementing people and process control. It should be noted that what so organizations in order to uh, get ahead of these insiders, they would need to implement multiple controls. So it's not a it's not a um, it's not a solution or it's not a risk where one type of control is enough or one type of uh, solution is enough. So you'd need to implement uh, controls around preventing data from unauthorized use across workloads, as well as protecting sensitive data throughout its life cycle and understanding activity context around your data. So you would need to do all three to fortify your data security strategy, which might seem da uh, daunting if you're attempting to implement three uh, very different solutions to help accomplish this, or you're working with multiple stakeholders to help you know, bring together a data security solution. However, this is where I think it's very important for me to start describing what Microsoft um, has has implemented or has come up with to help uh, organizations to manage and balance their data security and productivity. Uh, and I'll also be unpacking a little bit about how Cloud Essentials can help you with this. So Microsoft Purview, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is a comprehensive set of solutions uh, to help you manage or help your organization govern, protect, and manage data wherever it lives. It combines data governance solutions and Microsoft 365 compliance solutions uh, and service together into a unified platform um, to help your organization gain visibility into data uh, across your organization, safeguard and manage sensitive data across its life cycle, so wherever it lives. Uh, govern data seamlessly uh, and in new, in new comprehensive ways, as well as manage critical data risks and your regulatory requirements. So where we are at today uh, is how, how it would work in managing risky behavior. So Microsoft Insider Risk Management correlates uh, various signals to identify po uh, potential malicious or inadvertent insider risks, such as I, uh, IP theft, as we saw in the scenario earlier, data leakage and security violations. So insider risk management enables customers to create policies to manage security and compliance. Uh, it has been built by Microsoft with the, uh, with the intention of privacy by design. So users are uh, pseudonymized, pseudonymized sorry, by default, and role-based access controls and audit logs are in place to help ensure user-level privacy. However, on that note, Melindy will be providing you with a little bit more insight into um, user or, or user-level uh, privacy concerns. Uh, however, what Microsoft Insider Risk Management does is by using logs from your Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Graph, Insider Risk Management allows you to define specific policies to identify risk indicators. And after identifying the risks, it then allows you to take actions to mitigate these risks and if necessary, open investigation cases and take appropriate action. So whilst there is great power in technology, uh, as we all know, there's been massive technology um, enhancements and um, creations to help us manage compliance, uh, we have found that organizations still struggle to get their purview and uh, by, um, by implication inside a risk management deployment off the ground due to the people and process controls um, that really need to give technology its, uh, its legs or its life. So how Cloud Essentials, so with that in mind, uh, Cloud Essentials does things a little bit different from other deployment or technology deployment partners because we've learned that serious progress with Microsoft Purview adoption takes commitment uh, from decision makers with support across people, process, and technology uh, controls and a constant, a constant supply of skills and capacity to execute. The 
what I've, what I'm introducing now is the Cloud Essentials Compliance Accelerator program. It is a subscription uh, program that gives you access to a unique combination of compliance, uh, business and technical skills. And our services include advisory technical design and deployment uh, of Microsoft Purview. Um, we run we run this program as a 12 month program where we become your outsourced purview provider working as an extension of your team. So one such program within our accelerator program um, is the Cloud Essential Insider Risk and Governance program. And to give us uh, more information on the program and uh, how it works, both from a Cloud Essentials perspective as well as a Microsoft uh, technology perspective, I'm going to hand over to Yahat. Thanks, Navasha. So, our internal risk and, manic and compliance management program leverages Microsoft Purview internal risk to analyze risky behavior within your organization. Like I'm not having technology problems here. <laughs> there we go. Um, but to clarify what we mean by risky behavior, it's important to note that risky behavior doesn't necessarily involve just sensitive or risky information. Instead, it's about identifying patterns and actions that could potentially lead to risks. By utilizing Microsoft Preview Insider Risk Technology, we can analyze these behaviors and colorate them to your sensitive information. This program is designed to help you identify and improve very specific risks to your organization, but more importantly, showcase the value our Cloud Essentials multidisciplinary team brings to any organization's purview and information governance journey. It all starts with the initialization phase. Our aim in this phase is to formally kick off the engagement, identify key stakeholders from your technology, governance, and risk teams, and these stakeholders will be key to the success of your program especially when it comes to analyzing and investigating and you know, even um, escalating it to full um, forensic and e-discovery cases. These stakeholders are key to that people and process perspective. We also ensure the various stakeholders have the correct purview role and permissions assigned to ensure that they can deliver this program uh, and complete their different um, roles as part of the program engagement. The last step during this phase is to enable insider risk analytics. Um, Microsoft Purview Insider Analytics is a tool designed to help organizations identify and manage potential insider risks, as Nivasha discussed earlier. It includes data leaks, IP theft, and even potential security violation. It works by analyzing various signals and user activities to detect malicious and inadvertent risks. It allows us to evaluate potential risks without needing to initially configure specific internal risk policies or do complex integrations to systems like your HR database for additional triggers. All the information and activities used by internal risk analytics is already in your office resistant tenant in places like user activity and audit log. It just utilis, utilizes machine learning and analytics to bring these risks to the front. A benefit of insider risk analytics and insider risk as a whole is the feature of privacy by design. So all user activities are anonymized and aggregated, ensuring privacy while providing insights. I'm gonna just stop sharing the deck and just share my screen so that I can actually show you a process for enabling insider risk analytics. But outside of the program, insider risk analytics can be enabled for any tenant with E5 or E5 compliance add-on license. It is done by simply logging onto the Compliance Admin Center with uh, an account with appropriate permissions. You can also access the Compliance Admin Center by directly going to the, com the URL compliance.microsoft or even the modern admin center purview.microsoft.com. Go 
complete authentication. So once you're in the, um, the compliance admin portal, on the left hand side, you simply scroll down to insider risk management. Depending on whether you have configured or played around in this area, you might have the option just to follow a simple wizard that Microsoft guides you through for enabling insider risk management. Just waiting for that to load so I can go through the experience for you. The tenant I'm logging onto is a, a brand new tenant. So insider risk management and analytics is not turned on. So as you can see on screen, Microsoft provide a step-by-step -step informational um, area for you to follow, um, including some training materials and additional reading content that you can follow to get yourself familiar with insider risk management. But to turn on insider risk management, it's as simple as clicking on run scan. This will, ins this will enable insider risk management to do the initial scan that can take up to 48 hours to complete, as you can see on screen. But once that initial scan is completed, it updates the results analytics on a, bio on a rolling weekly um, reporting phase. So this will always be enabled in the background once you have enabled that. So you can always utilize this metrics as you continue your compliance and preview journey. You also have the option to turn off analytics if you don't want to utilize this anymore. Just stopping the screen sharing and just jumping back to the deck. Once we have enabled the analytics and we run for 48 hours, we move on to the activation phase of the program. And that is initiated by completing our town hall. The aim of this session is to discover what's important and sensitive for your organization, as well as the most, the more generic sensitive information types, such as those associated to global financial and data privacy regulations. Additionally, we present the initial results from the insider risk analysis that was enabled and identify the recommended insider risk policy templates that will be initially enabled during this program. We deploy these templatized insider risk policies and continue to gather and analyze their results. This is then used as an aid in identifying your organization's custom sensitive information types and also the locations with the highest risk. Ensuring when it comes to designing classifications with Microsoft sensitive information types, such as general classifiers or regular expressions, but more importantly, moving on to data loss prevention policies or sensitivity label policies, those areas are addressed first, ensuring that the identified risk are remediated first. The results you can see on screen is just a sample from a tenant that have had insider risk analytics running for a while. And as you can see, it identifies useful information around users' activities, such as exfiltration activities, then downloading and exfiltrating SharePoint files, and also potentially um, malicious activity that potentially occurred during the resignation period. We utilize this and analyze these results and present um, unusual expectation activities that we then take onto the implementation and design discussions for prioritizing data loss prevention and other policies. So as you can see on screen, an, uh, an example is 
it's got a lot of users in this instance that are downloading an unusual number of files to removal media. And more importantly, 40% of these um, files are actually um, non-sensitive. So it might not be required to focus in on blocking removal media, but there's a lot of utilizing users downloading files from SharePoint to their devices that contains sensitive information types. So we will then recommend that a DLP or a sensitive label policy is then created and rolled out during the activation phase to address this specific for this organization. Lastly, the close out phase is used to present the results and effectiveness of the configured purview solutions during this program and how it improves your risk posture. This is done by showing you the effectiveness of your DLP policies, data classification rules you have in place to your insider risk analytics results. The expectation here is that those additional purview controls that we have deployed within the organization will reduce the number of hits with, received within those insider risk policies. But as everyone you know here, data governance and information security is never an implement and forget engagement. And this program is just a starting point to your purview journey. I will stop here and hand you over to Melindy, who will cover important items you need to have in place if you are thinking about utilizing insider risk management. Thank you so much, Johan. So we'll now be having a discussion on how insider risk management impacts your compliance posture. So at Cloud Essentials, our compliance methodology focuses on incorporating best practices in the assurance field. And as Navasha mentioned earlier, Cloud Essentials ensures that controls implemented address the people, the process, and the technology within an entity. So with Johan having discussed the technology controls, we'll now address the people and the process elements in terms of your organization's regulatory and governance requirements regarding the deployment of insider risk management. So let's consider your user privacy concerns. Organizations need to be aware of their obligations in terms of employment monitoring. In terms of Article 88 of the GDPR, member states have the authority to create rules that protect employees' personal information, and these rules also apply to the termination of an employment contract. Further, in South Africa, one must consider the requirements in terms of RECA. So in terms of RECA, employees are allowed to monitor employee activities if adequate notice is given to an employee. Secondly, organizations need to consider that there is in fact a lawful basis for the deploying of insider risk management, and that, would, that lawful basis would be your legitimate interest. So that will be Article 6 in terms of the GDPR, as well as Section 11 of PAPIA. Then another essential element to consider in terms of the seven principles of the GDPR is transparency. You need to be transparent with your employees in declaring that you do monitor their behavior. Your employment engagement. Organizations can provide adequate notices to their staff members by implement, implementing it in their employment contracts, as well as declaring it in your employee privacy notice. So lastly, let's consider what needs to be in place in terms of deploying insider risk management. So consider adding in how long are you going to keep the monitoring data before an employee has resigned, as well as how long are you going to keep the data after an employee has resigned, should they have used the data in a malicious way in terms of legal, legal proceedings. And you can do this by implementing this in your retention policy. Then you're also going to have to take into account who is going to have access to these alerts in terms of monitoring or archiving the data. This will be available in your user activity report within your purview suite under insider risk management. So with that being said, Navasha, don't you want to share some quick wins on how organizations can get started with their insider risk deployments? 
Thanks, Melindy. Um, so from a starting point here, um, we're gonna I'm gonna take you through some of the quick wins we've identified in our experience. Um, quick win number one is obviously getting started with the Cloud Essentials um, inside a risk management program that Johan uh, took us through. Some of the benefits um, of using it is really uh, context aware detection. So being able to leverage machine learning to identify the most critical risks by analyzing both content and user activities. Uh, and as we said, this helps in pinpointing potential threats more accurately, um, as well as uh, the dynamic controls within, um, the, within the program. So implementing dynamic controls that enforce effective policies on high risk users uh, while allowing others to maintain productivity. So that's where we see that adaptive protection really coming in. This ensures that security measures are applied where they are needed most without disrupting overall workflow. Um, we also see within or with the deployment of insider risk management, there's automated mitigation. So um, Automated mit mitigation really helps to minimize the impact of potential data security incidents, and this reduces the administrative overhead and speeds up the response time to threats. Uh, integration with existing tools, this is uh, very important because it integrates with uh, adaptive protection, with Microsoft Purview, uh, data loss prevention, or uh, data lifecycle management, or within Purview. And this creates a comprehensive security framework. As we discussed earlier, one, one solution isn't enough, um, you know, to help you get by with your data security um, and compliance within an organization. It really takes, it's really a multi-pronged approach. Um, and having this comprehensive security framework uh, really helps address both internal and external uh, threats. As we as we see in, with Johan's demo, it is quite a quick setup. Um, so you can utilize this quick setup feature to automatically create uh, DRP policies as well for platforms like Teams and Exchange Online. And this really simplifies the initial configuration and ensures that you have basic protections in place uh, from the start. So by focusing on these areas, um, you can quickly enhance your organization's security uh, posture with Microsoft Adaptive Protection as well. Um, moving on uh, so, sort of to where we're more comfortable, I, I would think from a compliance perspective, as you took us through um, the various policies, so being able and, and documents or reviewing your governance documents, what does your acceptable use policy state, what does your employment contract state already around um, employee monitoring, and this again is, uh, and I suppose it's going to take me to our quick win, uh, our next quick win, quick win, which is getting your working group um, together because it really shows how you will need multiple stakeholders across the business to really bring this to life. You'd need your HR stakeholders and your legal and compliance team to help you analyze employee contracts and and and, and check whether you are within your rights to implement um, you know, monitoring uh, as you've discussed before. So do does it comply depending on your geolocation? Um, are you within a location where you're allowed to do this without consent or without further consent rather? Um, also being able to coordinate your journey. Uh, as we've seen, there is security uh, or there is security and technology involvement as well. It's not re it's, it's really not on one person to carry this forward. Uh, so just being able to coordinate and uh, what we pride ourselves on is being able to help our, our clients make and document decisions. Um, and that's really important. Again, given the multiple stakeholders involved in the deployment of, uh, of any technology control or any technology solution, um, you will need stakeholder engagement across the board from your legal um, to your security as well as your operational team. So those are some of the quick wins we've identified, uh, and, I, and I'm looking at the time, and I think um, we, we do have some time for questions before we, we go to um, our takeaways. So let's, um, I see on the chat uh, from Kiki, how can we definitively differentiate between a negligent insider and a malicious insider before any actual data loss occurs? 
so from my side and a very non-technical response, I think Johan will, will probably give a, a more technical response. I would think identifying the nature of the content. So this is where things like your sensitivity labeling also comes in handy, ensuring that, uh, so for example, if more sensitive information as it's been categorized is being downloaded uh, versus non-sensitive information, I would think um, that's, that's an indicator. Uh, of possible uh, of possible data loss or possible malicious intent. Um, Johan, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so I think um, you need a comprehensive approach that can all be delivered with Microsoft Purview technology. So it starts off with just ensuring that your, your sensitive data is protected with solutions like um, sensitivity labels so that in the event that you just attempt to send uh, or exfiltrate into the data, they are prevented by, by that mechanism. But it, it then also extend, extends to the other Microsoft Preview technology, so DLP and the data loss prevention and the integration it has with insider risk known as adaptive protection. So initially, when a potentially negligent insider performs an, a potential data exploitation, insider risk management will detect that anomalous behavior and just slightly increase their risk score with insider risk. And what that means is you can with have multiple levels of data loss prevention policies defined with adaptive protection. So by default, the user will not be prevented from exfiltrating those documents. Once their risk level increases, you can define a data loss prevention policy that uh, that will prompt them to validate why they need to share the document ex externally. And then lastly, if they continue or their behavior patterns um, increases or stay at the same, their risk level within insider risk management will go to the highest level and your data loss prevention policy will be the, mo the most restrictive level where it will actually block them from exploiting those data and prevent yeah, yeah, data loss before it occurs. So yeah, inside the risk management is not uh, the start all and end all, and you need to have that unified data um, security solution in place. Thanks, Johan. Uh, I see the next question is also from Kiki. Uh, are there any or what specific behavioral indicators can reliably predict that an employee will become an insider threat before they act? So I think that's very important to understand from insider risk management. So it, util, it utilizes machine learning and pattern behavior learning to learn what usual behavior is for your users. And if any specific behavior outside of that will trigger the appropriate, will be an indicator. For an example, if they, their access pattern changes, they start working later um, or, or longer, um, they, they start having excessive or additional data access and downloads, and potentially that's outside of their normal job role. So, and then insider risk will pick up that that's a change in their normal behavior and potentially flag that as a risky uh, um, attempt. But it, it, it requires, that all these behaviors be be monitored together um, and even potentially investigated to 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 reliably predict whether it's a malicious user or, or not. Thanks, Johan. Um, are there any other questions? Please feel free to drop it in the chat. We can also, um, if you want to, um, we can un. Unmute you if you want to ask something. Doesn't look like any additional questions. Um, doesn't look like it. So I think just based on your responses, Johan, it seems like while um, so while Microsoft uh, Insider Risk. Uh, and ad adaptive protection offer uh, or are powerful tools for enhancing organizational securities. Uh, they also come with their challenges, it sounds, and and and, so, and some effort is required across stakeholders. Uh, it also requires careful consideration from management. Uh, so 
by understanding, I think, because uh, a lot of the questions or often what, what people come up with is, okay, we, we have or we're trying to deploy this, but there's often, um, you know, false positives or we're finding it difficult because it's very resource intensive. I think it's it's for organizations to obviously be, be able to balance that uh, and also to understand that um, to leverage their capabilities across their data security solutions uh, and insider risk can definitely, uh, you know, help with that. So I see, sorry, another comment on here. Uh, what is the role of the employee change and the person will, okay. What if the role of the employee change and the person uh, uses more data or, or works different hours versus normal? So would that be a possible indicator? Yeah, so you can change the, the indicator period when it that Microsoft Insider Risk Management utilizes to determine change in behavior. So yeah, that you can definitely um, change that. So it's a set time um, where you configure Insider Risk Management to analyze behavior to determine whether it's malicious or not. And I think that's why it's important, as we said during the explanation of the program, that this requires a multidisciplinary stakeholders to be informed and utilize inside risk management and potentially even somebody from human resources might be an analyst within inside risk management where they'll receive an alert will be generated uh, and they can within inside risk management open that alert uh, and add a comment that this user user have recently made a change in their role and the, the expected behavior is whether this is expected that aren't any um, activity out of expected from the new role. So, so yeah, it's not only a, a technology solution, people and processes is key to the success of insider risk management. Thanks, Johan. Um, doesn't seem like there are any more questions, so I'm going to uh, just move on to our takeaways. Um, as you can see on the screen, we are we have provided some resources. So we've got an article on insider risk and adaptive protection, uh, and just how to uh, to securely uh, or to secure productivity rather, as we are aware of the challenges between deployment um, and how it might affect your your productivity. We've also included a link to our collaboration tools article, just around how you can. Um, more effectively uh, use them uh, in your environment. Also, please feel free to reach out if you'd like uh, a very informal conversation uh, on your Microsoft security journey. Um, yeah, our our links are on on. Uh, we've shared our links our links to our LinkedIn earlier as well. Uh, and I, we do have time, and I see one one question, uh, another question on the chat. So uh, I'm just going to take it. To what extent does company culture influence the likelihood of insider risk, and how can this be quantified? So I think a big one uh, we talk about a lot from a governance perspective is the importance of uh, compliance culture uh, within a company. So, so things like embedding uh, compliance principles, ethical principles, and setting that tone at the top. Um, so this is a great, it's a great question uh, around why compliance is, is we, as we always say, is a journey. Uh, because as much as the, the technology is there to help you um, pick up threats like this, uh, the education and the culture instilled within the organization uh, is what really helps to improve that. Uh, so I, I definitely think it has a lot of a great uh, influence rather on in, on things like insider risk. Uh, so just we have found, um, and even in the example we used earlier, the more unhappy I would think an employee is, the more likely they are to, to perhaps have some malicious intent or some uh, feelings or, or, or have hurt feelings toward the company on their exit. So I think it's very important to ensure your employees um, are aware of um, you know the culture and setting that tone at the top around things like transparency uh, and as well as ethical behaviors within the organization. Okay, um, any other any other questions? 
as I said, please feel free to reach out to Johan Melendi or myself uh, if you'd like more uh, well, further insights on this topic. If, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, we will be closing out for today. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, be on the lookout for an email from, uh, from us for your CPE credits as well.